This video is brought to you by- For further details, we return you now to your regularly scheduled program. All right, jokes aside, I think today's video is a pretty cool topic, and I hope everyone else will think so too. US 650618B2. What is it? Short answer, it's a patent held by the US government pertaining to mind control. Long answer, it's an electromagnetic manipulation technique classified as magnetotherapy designed to elicit physiological effects in human recipients through pulsating frequencies that are distributed by television screens and computer monitors. Basically, it's a patent for mind control through a screen, sort of. Here's the thing. This topic is dangerously close to a line that I just don't want to cross. I do not want to run afoul of YouTube's community guideline standards or get branded as some sort of conspiracy nut job because the truth is we just don't know enough about this patent or its author to really say for sure. However, after seeing the topic surface on social media, reading the documents, delving into similar research, and tracking down decades-old internet archives, I wanted to tell the story of US 650-6148-B2 because it's interesting. That's really about it. To really begin, we need some context. In the aftermath of World War II, American and British intelligence agencies cooperated while competing, in a sense, to explore what was now defeated German territory, looking for weapons, scientific research, military technology, pharmaceutical products, and more. Operation Paperclip, as it's now known, was a very real, very secret at the time endeavor, resulting in measurable scientific growth and gain for America. Example, German technology and recovered research out of literal death camps post-World War II resulted in the product we now know as Bayer Aspirin. This is a commonly accepted historical fact, but it goes deeper. In the following years, American clandestine intelligence, mainly the CIA, became obsessed with compelled truth and mind control. Commonly referenced now as one of the most glaringly obvious U.S. domestic atrocities of the past century, the CIA, in the aftermath of Operation Paperclip, began conducting undisclosed experiments on U.S. citizens that involved psychedelic drug regimens, abuse, and other shocking techniques to break the mind of participants. According to officially declassified MK Ultra documents that managed to avoid being lost, or maybe destroyed, when the House of Cards finally came crashing down, we now understand the full scope of the atrocities. Quote, Although the CIA insists that MK Ultra type experiments have been abandoned, 14-year CIA veteran Victor Marchetti has stated in various interviews that the CIA routinely conducts disinformation campaigns and that CIA mind control research continued. In a 1977 interview, Marchetti specifically called the CIA claim that MK Ultra was abandoned a cover story. End quote. Now, that could be a topic all on its own, very easily, but the point here is to demonstrate that the United States government, namely the Central Intelligence Agency, at one point in time, at least, had a fixation on the topic of mind control up to and including the torture of their own citizens in undisclosed experiments. Scary stuff. So how does it connect? Well, having established that there was, at some point, a willingness to conduct undisclosed, immoral, unethical, and illegal experiments on U.S. citizens domestically, it sort of changes how we need to analyze things. For starters, patents can be filed for a number of different reasons, but the primary application or reason to file a patent is to protect a specific invention. Going further, it's not just about protecting what you made, it's about protecting everything possible that's even remotely similar to what you made, because the world of invention is now a constant battle between individuals, corporate interests, and even entire countries. Basically, the patents we will examine today don't necessarily even do anything, right? I have to state that in cold, point-blank terms. Or maybe don't do anything anymore, but they certainly exist with extremely troubling implications in tow. This is the main patent in question, the title of the video, and a common focal point for online conspiracy theories. US 650-6148-B2. This patent is extremely long, contains a tremendous amount of information, but I'd like to read a couple of individual passages for contextual reasons, as well as link it down below in the description. First one, quote, These results confirm that, indeed, the nervous system of a subject can be manipulated through electromagnetic field pulses emitted by a nearby CRT or LCD monitor, which displays images with pulsed intensity. End quote. Remember, the title of the patent is Nervous System Manipulation by Electromagnetic Fields from Monitors, and pertains directly to the idea that pulsating EM fields from television and monitor screens, regardless of what is actually displayed for the image, can be used to manipulate the nervous system of nearby watchers. One more paragraph. Keep in mind, this is from the patent itself, which was filed by Dr. Hendrikus G. Luce in 2003 for this one. Quote, Certain monitors can emit electromagnetic field pulses that excite a sensory resonance in a nearby subject through image pulses that are so weak as to be subliminal. This is unfortunate 
since it opens a way for mischievous application of the invention, whereby people are exposed unknowingly to manipulation of their nervous systems for someone else's purposes. Such application would be unethical and is, of course, not advocated. It is mentioned here in order to alert the public to the possibility of covert abuse that may occur while being online or while watching TV, a video, or a DVD." End quote. Consider for a moment that the patent itself is warning the public that someone else can manipulate them subliminally through their screens. But let's take a step back because I'm probably losing a whole lot of people right now who will be thinking something along the lines of, is this idiot really going to say that I can get controlled, mind controlled through a TV? Yes. Yes, I'm saying that, but not in the way that most people might think. Turns out there are actually a multitude of medically relevant patents to draw from that demonstrate the basic premise of EMF nervous system manipulation. There's this one, for example, that pertains to pulsed EM fields for the purpose of treating neurological disorders. There's this one, which uses electromagnetic brain stimulation to manipulate dreaming. And then there's this one, where, quote, an electrical device applies low-frequency energy in a range below approximately 10 hertz to the patient's brain tissue, end quote. Remember, the original patent we're discussing today, US 650-6148B2, pertains to frequencies near 1 half hertz or 2.4 hertz. Why am I showing these other examples, even though they're probably very boring and a lot of the information is going to make people tune out? Well, the answer's simple. The world of medical research has already accurately identified that low-frequency pulsating EM fields can manipulate the human nervous system. That's a fact. The only difference is our delivery method and strength. I can't sit here and tell you whether or not your screens are secretly modifying your behavior and mental state. I've read the research, done the digging, but I would need literal years to understand a lot of the subject matter. However, what we can do is look at a few more connections. Let's re-examine Hendrickus G. Luce and ask the question, who is he? Internet conspiracy theories abound, stating that this individual does not really exist and is likely a pseudonym for some sort of governmental program or group of people, but let's dig deeper. The patent itself has an address. The address leads to a person by that same name, and the person has an obituary. Not a great start for the world of gripping online conspiracy theories, but there's more. Hendrickus G. Luce, over the span of about five years, patented 10 separate inventions. I'm just going to read them in order. Nervous system manipulation by electromagnetic fields from monitors. The same one again, but a fresh filing. Nervous system manipulation by electromagnetic fields from monitors. Different number, though. Remote magnetic manipulation of nervous systems. Pulse variability in electric field manipulation of nervous systems. Pulsative manipulation of nervous systems. Electric fringe field generator for manipulating nervous systems. Subliminal acoustic manipulation of nervous systems. Magnetic excitation of sensory resonances. Manipulation of nervous systems by electric fields. Method and apparatus for manipulating nervous systems. Those are all of them. Do we see a pattern here? This inventor, for the span of about five years, patented nearly a dozen separate nervous system manipulation techniques and devices, primarily aimed at television screens and surrounding uses. But it gets even more strange. In 2003, at the age of 77 approximately, according to his obituary, Hendrickus G. Luce created a software development company of sorts. According to information filings with the state of California from 2005, this company was called Q-Wave and was registered at the same address where he originally filed most of the patents. This company had no discernible online presence I could find other than a very basic website, but more on that later, but remained active and in good standing for about 12 years until it was dissolved in 2015. What's infinitely more interesting to me, however, is that when dissolved, the official records indicate that the company, quote, never incurred any known debts or liabilities. A company that existed for over a decade, legally, seems likely to have incurred and subsequently paid some sort of debts or liabilities, but also the corporation never acquired any known assets. See, that's strange to me. I've had my own company for a few years now, and I have absolutely incurred debts and liabilities that were then paid, and simply by way of existing, I have built up assets, which, like, this very YouTube channel is an asset. All the electronics equipment that I have for working on it are assets, etc., etc. There may, of course, be a plausible explanation for all this, but it's interesting to say the very least that a software development company never accrued any debts, liabilities, or paid them off, or got any assets whatsoever. Think about it. A prolific and highly skilled inventor, obviously this man is top of his field, and we'll see why in just a second, pursues almost a dozen separate but highly correlated nervous system manipulation patents from 1998 to 2005. Two years later, he forms a software development company that is registered and updated for the next 12 years continuously, while accruing zero debt, zero liabilities, and zero assets, and then closes it all down. 
That is a very strange pattern to observe. For added impact here, Hendrickus G. Luce, as of 1989, I think, according to Defense Technical Information Center documents, was working for the Laguna Research Laboratory on projects for the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, which is the research and development arm for the DOD, the Department of Defense. Hendrickus G. Luce was patenting a wide range of nervous system manipulation devices and techniques that can supposedly exercise control through EM field pulsing screens shortly after working for DARPA, where he then created a software development company, which seems to have produced nothing for 12 continuous years and then closed down with no assets. I have more questions now than when I started doing this whole thing. Let's circle back to that company again, Q-Wave. What is it and what did it do? Well, according to Internet Archives, the company had a rudimentary website where it sold a piece of software. That software, priced in at $14, was apparently a sort of at-home testing version of the patented concept. Quote, Exploratory experiments at Laguna Research Laboratory in Fallbrook, California have shown that externally generated pulsed electric fields can affect our nervous system by exciting a so-called sensory resonance. For certain pulse frequencies near a half hertz, 30 pulses per minute, the excitation has been observed to result in relaxation, drowsiness, or sexual arousal, depending on the pulse frequency and the skin region to which the field is applied. These physiological effects have been observed only for weak fields, end quote. Further down, it reads, quote, Pulsed electric fields may also be emitted by computer monitors and television screens, simply by pulsing the brightness of displayed images. The strength of this effect depends on design, but for certain monitors and TV screens, a sensory resonance can be excited by image brightness pulses that are so small as to be imperceptible. With such computer monitors or TV screens, susceptible people at normal viewing distances can thereby be subjected to covert manipulation of their nervous system." End quote. And then lastly, a list of features that the software supposedly included. This is the part of the video where I go down a bit of a rabbit hole for speculation. Here's what all of this looks like to me, and this is opinion, very clearly labeled opinion. Hendrickus G. Luce was an inventor working for the government of some kind. During his professional career, he created numerous different nervous system manipulation devices and techniques for the Department of Defense. Those techniques were almost certainly adopted by other government agencies, such as the CIA, which already has a long and proven track record of pursuing mind control and other manipulation tactics against American citizens. I mean, they'll torture people and violate laws to try and get mind control techniques operational. What do we think they did with all this? Why did he make Q-Wave? I have no idea. Was he selling a demo version of what he had already created for the government, trying to show people how dangerous it is? Was he trying to profit off the idea himself in the later years of his life and leave a safety net for his family? Was he bucking the yoke of government control and sending us a regretful warning? I have no idea. But the one thing that I do know is that these patents exist. They were made during a span of time when the inventor worked with the Department of Defense. He then sold software allegedly capable of demonstrating nervous system influence or control publicly, and yet the company he sold it through claims to have never acquired any known assets at all. In the end, I find myself thinking that there probably isn't much to worry about here. I know that's a little bit anticlimactic. I was going to say they're controlling you through the screens, but they're not. I really don't think they are. At least not anymore. It's fun to be conspiratorial, when done responsibly, of course. But CRT televisions, which are the most susceptible piece of technology to this, are largely gone now. It's certainly possible that the government continues to pursue such topics. In fact, I find it probably highly likely. But the headaches and other physiological side effects that children would get frequently from sitting too close to the screen for long periods of time have largely disappeared. Plus, the technology has evolved and changed with new forms of low energy output screens being much more common and popular. So that probably undermines the functionality of what is described in these particular patents. Honestly, maybe in 10 or 20 years, we'll learn about the experiments that they ran. I believe it. I, I bet they did and criticize the government once again for running unauthorized trials of a cyber weapon on the public. But for now, it's still a bit of a mystery. Patent US 6506148B2 makes the rounds every now and again on social media, stirring up fear and rousing speculation. And it definitely is a terrifying prospect and a terrifying patent or a series of patents from someone who very well may just be some kind of acronym for a government body or agency or think tank. Who knows? But for right now, that's about all I have. If you want to support, please do consider checking the links down below. I'm working on some pretty big projects in the background, and that's only possible because the community, all of you watching this till the very end, have chosen to support me. Thank you for that. I do appreciate it. Anyway, I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.